Hello, people. This is Lee Call 3 Podcast with James, my partner, James Proctor. James, how are you doing today? Hey, Lee. Doing well. How are you today? Okay. Now, we're going to talk about Sammy Gravano, and people are going to say, oh, Sammy Gravano again. Well, Sammy just keeps spreading lies that people don't want to uh, go after. Um, James, do you think Sammy continuously uh, lies? Yeah, I mean that's that's what's that's what's happening pretty much with the the series of lives that he's doing every week. He he ends up at least you know one answering one or two questions a week where he embellishes the truth or he actually just downright lies. And right now he uh, yesterday he uh, he doubled down yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he did, and and so he doubled down on this uh, on. This idea that F. Lee Bailey uh, stated that he, when he met with John Gotti and 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 Lacasio and Gravano, that Gotti was uh, wanting Lacasio and and Gravano to take the fall so that Gotti could be free. Yeah, and and so he's saying Lacasio and him together, you know, and 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 that's the thing. Uh-huh. Um, I think at this point that Sammy already had it in his head that he was going to flip. That's my personal opinion by the time. Yeah. And, and he was, uh, now he's talking about Bailey, but, and he's saying that Jerry Capiche, he uh, did like an interview with Bailey basically where Bailey Mm -hmm. said this. Right. Um, And then Sammy said, he's going to, he's going to prove it by, uh, by giving us the interview, showing us the interview. Right. Sammy, I cannot find an interview. Have I found an article on it? Yes, but not an interview. Right. Okay. And uh, so we're going to show this, but he's a little bit pissed. He was very upset yesterday, really going off on other content creators. Yes. I can't play what he said because he cursed all the way through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He basically wanted uh, anyone that disputes him or has a problem with him to, to come to uh, Arizona and talk to him face to face about it. And his exact words if anybody has a little hair on their ball, Mm-hmm. On one of their balls, they would come see me in Arizona. Yeah. You're 80, Sammy. <laughs> what are you going to do? You want Mikey Scars to come visit you? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a young man compared to you. Uh, I mean, so what do you want? You're talking out your ass. But anyway, yeah. we're going to get into this a little bit deep, deeper because we talked about this before, but then we really, I, I, I really researched something, and you did some research too. Can yeah. we... Can we find an actual article where Jerry Capisci actually interviewed F. Lee Bailey? No, no, we, we can't. And we, we basically what we could find is, and, and, and I'm going to show what we could find. Yeah. Pesh, um, Jerry Capisci um, has a record going back, you know, 30 or 40 years, all of his articles, they're in that gangland news. And so, even, you know, his daily news stuff, his post stuff, and so, and they're here. And so, anyway, there's two times that that he mentions uh, maybe getting a statement from F. Lee Bailey uh, regarding uh, the Gambinos. And one is about John Gotti and the trial in, in 91. And then the second one is dealing with the trial that, the case that, um, that Joe Watts had. And, you know, this this is the article that Sammy's talking about. Mm-hmm. And this article is not an interview between Jerry Capisci and F. Lee Bailey. This is, article is still based on the hearsay of who, James? Yeah, it's based on the hearsay of, of Sammy the Bull Gravano. And for some reason, Jerry Capisci's in love with Sammy Gravano. Mm-hmm. And Jerry Capisci takes Sammy Gravano's word as the word coming from God. Yes. That's what it seems like. It's like if you look at anything he's ever written about Sammy has always been positive. Would you pretty much say that? Yeah, at least at least since you know he he ratted, or at least the last twenty years or so, it, it seems like that. Especially since he's came out of a prison in what nine in two thousand eighteen. I could say that it's it's been uh, positive. Gravano's one of of. Uh, Jerry Capisi's uh, go-to uh, resources or sources when he wants to do a story. 
he and he could probably get a hold of him on the phone and say Sammy and like under friendly terms. And, and friend and let's face it, Sammy has a lot of information for a guy like Jerry Capici. Yeah, but Jerry Capici's. You know, it's disappointing that that this article is basically hearsay article. Uh, mm -hmm. because there's no proof of it whatsoever. And F. Lee Bailey came out later on and said it wasn't true. Right, e exactly. And, and that's what's a little difficult in this is now F. Lee Bailey's in the grave. You know, he's not going to be able to uh, dispute anything today. But, yeah, we have stuff, you know, when he was trying to say that, uh, you know, Gravano was the one saying that, Joe Watts uh, was a rat. And I know there's some history there with the Gaudis and Joe Watts, but we'll keep that out of that. What I want to mention is that Gravano mentioned that Watts was a, a rat. And and so they went to F. Lee Bailey on it and also Matthew Mari, and they said, no, he's not a, not a rat. Okay, let me get over. People, I'm going to read this to you, and I'm going to break it down as we go along. But what Sammy's trying to do is say that this was a, he's trying to make this sound like this was an interview of F. Lee Bailey by Capisci. And it's mm -hmm. not. This is a hearsay article. Basically, uh, he's repeating, uh, Jerry Capisci's repeating what was told to several people by Sammy Gravano. And as we know by now, Sammy Gravano told a lot of people a lot of lies. But anyway, yeah. this is. Could I set the context maybe on this? For a moment, what's that? Could I set the context? Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah, so, so what we're reading, and so this article is actually uh, from a couple of years ago. And anyway, the meeting that took place, there was a meeting that took place. This was in August of 1991. It was at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, the MCC. And so, uh, for those that were following the trial, you'll realize that that in the summer, one of the, one of the issues was that uh, Don got the dapper Don, John Gotti had been um, represented by Bruce Cutler. You know, Bruce Cutler had represented him and, you know, very animated attorney. He had really done, um, you know, a good job in getting him out of uh, previous uh, hotspots. And so anyway, uh, the judge in this case said, Hey, you know, you're too close to St. talking about uh, a conflict the, of interest, basically. Yeah, exactly. Saying you're a personal attorney to uh, a mobster and to a, a, a mob family. And so now um, John Gotti needs to find a another attorney. And part of that is to try is interviewing potential attorneys to take on the case. OK, yes. So. Okay, so I'm going to read up. A, so they met 1990, August of 91 at Metropolitan Correction Center. It was three months before Gravano decided to flip. But Bailey told Gangland he had left the meeting with Gotti, Frankie Lacasio, and Sammy DeBull, knowing that he wanted no part of the case because he believed Dapper Don decided to throw uh, Gravano under the bus. Now, did, did, did um, this statement ever come? From F. Lee Bailey? No, it didn't. And then what what I think is interesting is is if Frankie Locke was there, Frankie Lacasio, why is it he's saying throw Gravano under the bus? Why wouldn't it have been throwing Lacasio and Gravano under the bus? Yeah. You know, that's a little strange. Exactly. And Lacasio also, when when they were sentenced, do you remember what Lacasio said about John Gotti? Yeah, the world would be, you know, if there were more people like John Gotti, you know, we would have a much better world. Does that sound like a guy that John Gotti was trying to throw under the bus in a meeting? No, it wasn't. And we do know it's time that there was a lot of issues, personal issues between uh, John Gotti and Gravano. They, you know, during this time in prison, these few months, they just, you know, just things weren't going well. Yeah. And personally, and they're personal friendship they had before and so okay basically Gotti began the conversation Bailey recalled by saying just tell me what day we get to acquittal and I'll arrange a party but Bailey didn't think there would be any celebrating and he explained why uh why to this would be why why this is not going to happen to the client 
right. to be frank, Bailey told Gotti, I don't think that you have a very good chance to beat the case. The problem the legendary defense lawyer said was that Gotti was heard talking about taking parts of the murders on the, I, on the FBI tape recordings. He said, look, we could do anything. These guys here will take the fall for me. And I saw Garano give him an, oh, yeah, look, I turned the case down. Gravano uh, called the FBI. Okay, so he Gravano's using this as the moment that he called the FBI when he knew this was going down. But he Actually, the, and it was several months later, three or four months later when yes, Gravano and, did and call then, the FBI. And then he said that he didn't want them to know right away because he wanted to prepare his family and everything and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Okay. Um, personally, I think God, that, that he already knew what he was going to do. He was mm-hmm. looking for a reason to do it. He should just come out and say it. But all this stuff that's written in this article is Capisci repeating what has come out of Sammy's mouth. That's not correct. Bailey's mouth. You know, okay. And okay. So when he said, look, these guys uh, will take a full, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, B- Bailey said his MCC meeting was arranged by Gravano's then attorney, Gerald, uh, Gerald Shargle who, along with Gotti's lawyer, Bruce Cutler, had been disqualified by Judge Leo Glaser because they were overheard on tape recordings with Gotti, making them potential witnesses in the case. It was the only time Bailey met the three Gambino family administration members, he said. But he he did see the trio a few times as a spectator at the mob trial of the century. Okay, so when when he went to the meeting, uh, when he went to the trial, Bailey, where did what side of the courthouse? What side did he sit on? Did he sit on Sammy's side or did he sit on Gotti's side? I can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry, I was on mute. So yeah, he was on Gotti's side. So he said, uh, people asked him, you know, why are you here? He said, well, I'm a supporter of John Gotti, and and he did say, you know, I want to be here at this uh, trial uh, in Brooklyn. So, but he was there on John Gotti's side. Okay. It was the only time. uh, Okay. The number of acquittals in the Eastern District was pretty slim. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But the the truth is that at that time, the the, uh, any type of acquittal was slim because of of the tape recordings more than anything. Yeah, that was that was going to be next to impossible to um, get around. And so that's that was really the, the problem that Bailey had with it. And also any pretty much any of the other potential um, attorneys in this case was, you know, that is very damning the, what was heard on the tapes. Okay. And, uh, let's see, it said, uh, Gravano was a pretty good government witness would have enjoyed his confrontation with Bailey. Now, what are they talking about? So, so basically, uh, he was all, he was a lawyer for Joe Watts. Yes. Is, is that correct? And he yeah. wanted, and he wanted to get, get, uh, Sammy understand so bad because he, uh, he wanted to rip them apart. But yes, exactly. Right, at the day before the, Sammy was supposed to get on the stands, what happened? Yeah, he 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 copped a a plea. So Joe Watts. Um, Joe Watts and, copped copped a plea. Yes, Joe Watts, and that's and you know understand that that that's common for criminal cases. Yeah. Not it may not be you know let's take the mob out of it, but you know you're going to have those negotiations uh, ongoing. Uh, all the way up to the day of a trial. And so, you know, a prosecutor, the only thing they want to, they want is to be able to uh, have a check mark saying, hey, we won this case. So if someone pleads guilty, there's a plea, then they've won the case. Plus, you know, they don't have to, you know, continue two or three weeks with a trial or two or three months with a trial. They can go to their next uh, case on their caseload. But, and Grano, uh, Gravano disputes, Bailey said that, it was obvious that he was about to flip and then Sammy saying, no, no, he's having me flipping too early. So uh, he's saying that Bailey is wrong about that part, that he, yeah. that he wasn't even considering flipping. Uh, mm-hmm. So Sammy's arguing about that. Yeah. Okay. At that point, Gravano continued. I still thought we were fighting together, him, Frankie and me. That's when they're talking about the meeting between the, 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 the that was so the bull, the bull recalled, you know, you notice this article, the bull recalled, the bull recalled. He's mm-hmm. recalling this article. He's giving all this information to Jerry Capisci. Yes, exactly. 
and so yesterday, Sammy said that he could show the article where uh, this was actually said by, in person mm -hmm. by F. Lee Bailey. So my challenge to Sammy Gravano would be, show it. Right. We researched exactly. this stuff. You know, Sammy, if you have something magical that's there, you should show it and prove everybody a liar. Prove you could prove uh, Mikey Scar's a liar. You can prove, prove us liars. Anybody else talking about this? You could prove them liars. Yeah, and I, you know, I have a question, Lee, on this. This is interesting. So it says here that was so the bull recalled, even though me and Frankie were already arguing with John about the case. We were not on good relations with John then. They're just talking about in the summer. And so I might have stared at John and Frankie might have too. But but then it says he, being God, he didn't tell me he was going to throw me under the bus until November. But he just said earlier in the article that he was there in, you know, in the meeting with John Gotti, Lucasio, and himself, and that Gotti said he was going to have them take the fall. But then why is it now, all of a sudden, later in this article, uh, it's saying he didn't tell me he was going to throw me under the bus until November. November's when he, when he uh, Sammy, uh, flipped. So, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. This article's... Yeah, he says, and he says, he says this was a few days later on November 11th, 1991. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the meeting, he claims, was three months August. before. yes. So, so he's saying August and then, mm -hmm. and that is true. We got evidence because I looked in the New York times and it's like August 6th of 91. It's mentioned that, um, that there was a meeting between John Gotti and Ethelie Bailey that he might take on the case as, is what it was. And so we have other evidence from other sources that yet yeah, Ethelie Bailey was there with John Gotti and he did meet with Frank. Lucasio and um, Sammy, and so Frankie Locke had had showed nothing. He has been acting nothing like Sammy said. Like he he was staring. He said that Frankie Locke was staring down John Gotti. Frankie he also said that that Frankie Locke talked to him about killing John Gotti if they got out of there. Yeah, and yet this great this unbelievable statement was made by Frankie Locke about John Gotti at sentencing. Oh yeah, he stayed there right, right up to the end. He stayed right by uh, John Gotti, and he, and he was a co-defendant in that. And Lacasio never showed any uh, thoughts of ratting. He never saw any. He never heard anything where he said something negative about about him. So the only thing that we have is, is in Sammy's podcast that he's saying oh well frankie was upset i know they had instances uh, for example where there's supposedly some oranges that that were uh that frankie and had gotten and then him and um i guess sammy had eaten a couple of them while john Gotti was was sleeping and then john yeah, was upset yeah. you know that type of stuff that was mentioned and so and that but, may have happened who the hell knows yeah, i mean, I mean if, if you're in a it, it, you got, of yeah. course there's gonna be stress what do you do? big deal yeah uh, exactly but frankie never i mean for someone to make that type of statement someone that basically gets a life sentence and he makes that comment you know wow you know it doesn't sound like he was upset with john Gotti. and it sounds like to me that frankie Locke could have easily become a witness like sammy easily Oh, he could have, uh, and he could have because he was there. He was the he one. He was closer was to Gotti than, than Gravano ever was. Yeah, because you remember all the tapes. A lot of it was with Frank. You know, especially the one on December twelfth, the real damning ones. That was Frank and Frankie and John Gotti speaking. They Frankie Frankie Locke and John Gotti were friends. They were actual mm -hmm. friends. It wasn't like Sammy was an outsider that came in. And then Sammy said yesterday on his thing that. Uh, on his show that he was so upset that when, when he heard that tape because he loved John Gotti, but mm -hmm. yet he's talking about, he says he loved John Gotti, but he was talking, he said that he was talking about Frankie DeChico of killing John Gotti. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's something that I always found was interesting. So basically he's saying that I don't think that would have happened because understand. So they said, so what happened was that this was before uh, big Paul had gotten uh, taken out. And so the, the thought was that, Oh, 
well, Sammy and Frank, uh, Frank Tachico, they were going to um, give John Gotti a chance because Frank Tachico said, oh, well, John Gotti could be um, a, be a boss and I could be an underboss, but John Gotti could never be my underboss. That's what he was saying about right. And yeah, so anyway, yeah. and anyway, then they're saying, oh, well, we'll give him a year. And if he screws up or whatever, we don't like him, then we'll we'll take him out. So, you know, number one, we know Frankie died in in April, so that never uh, happened. But, you know, to me, what's what's interesting is, you know, he's already upset all the families by what happened. The, the Paul hit did a lot of got a lot of people upset. So you're going to tell me that then in another a few months or a year, they would have taken out John Gotti. Uh, I just don't see that happening. I, I see this as revisionist history. In you mean uh, Sammy history? Yes, yeah, Sam. Exactly. Yeah, I, and and this is this is what we talk about on here: rewriting history. You right, because he's always saying, on. "Oh, yeah, him and Frankie would have taken him out," and then he's saying, "Well, if he would beat the case, he would have taken out uh, John." You know, he always talked big about that, but you know, he had several years that he could have taken out. Uh, John Gotti, if it was so bad and everything, then he could have done it. But, you know, they were friends, supposedly, you know, while he was building his empire. Sammy was building well, his empire. They were making money in the 90s. Uh, up oh, until my God. He, Sammy got made all of his wealth. They were all making, John the, Gotti. the family was very profitable. There was no yes. reason for anybody to worry about John Gotti because the family no. was profitable. They were the unions, were, you know, and. You know, whether people like Sammy or not, Sammy made a lot of money because he liked to put a lot in his pocket, but he mm -hmm. still kicked up a lot of money. Uh, so oh, yeah, he, he, he did. And he, he was very uh, in Sammy. Um, but, you know, what happened was Sammy did have some construction and some stuff before uh, the hit. But, you know, John Gotti, all of those people that took part in this um, Paul, big Paul hit, he rewarded them. We know that he gave um, even Joe Watts, uh, Tony Bellotti's uh, book of, of business for, yep. for loan sharks that is worth a million a year. So he rewarded all of those guys. And, Watts made, started, and Watts made a lot more money than Bellotti made on it. See, oh, these, yeah, guys, he did. these guys were street guys. They knew how to make money. So, mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. But the fact of the matter is, this is why Sammy dis despises uh Mikey Scars because Mikey Scars is is trying to stop him from uh changing the history of what happened right uh, the history of the Gambino family history in all the families because because Sammy's trying to trying to uh change it hmm. and that's the problem on here and this is where if Mikey Scars does not come along there's really nobody credible enough to shut him down because nobody here is, was actually in the same room with him Sammy Gravano made uh, uh, he made this uh, Mikey Scars. Yeah, exactly. He gave uh, you know he 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 really um, you know he helped Mikey Scars with you know basically Mikey took over uh, a lot of the businesses that Sammy had before he flipped and all of that. And so yeah, I mean uh, there's a real tightness between the, the two yeah. of them that goes back to child, uh, to his, uh, teen years. And about this is how you know years. Sammy's full of crap on a lot of things he says, mm -hmm. because he, to come out and attack, remember he, he, he started the attacks when he called the, uh, Mikey Scar's like hang around guy. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But Sammy Gravano, you made him, you sat at the table when you, when he was made. So how can you say that? You, if, if you made this man, you made a group of men that night, Bobby Borrello, you made John Gotti, uh, Jr., you were there. Mm -hmm. And he administered the uh, oath, you know, he was the one. And, and, but this is how spiteful he is. Sammy will say anything out of revenge, just like he tried to call Mikey Scars a hanger on guy, which we all know ain't true. Right. And, and that's what started this more than anything between, uh, when he came out and attacked Mikey Scars like that, then Mikey Scars started following, uh, hitting back at him and calling him out on a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, exactly. And nobody else is here to do it. Nobody else would have came along to do it. It doesn't matter what people feel uh, about uh, uh, Mikey Scars or Sammy Gavano. Okay, yes, we know that they cooperated. But we also yeah. know one of those cooperators are here now that can call Sammy out 
And it seems like every show now, uh, Mikey Scars is saying, wait a minute, this ain't right, Sammy. You know? Yeah, exactly. And one thing I wanted to mention that I think is important is that, you know, a lot of our viewers, they don't, they don't watch Sammy. They don't watch Mikey. But, you know, we get a lot of comments that people are interested in, in what's going on. And so it's not like we're here to platform anybody. We're not here to always do a show on Sammy uh, just because it's he's the biggest name. But Sammy Gravano is making comments that we've been following. You know, so if he's doubling down on on the thing with Effley Bailey, uh, why would we not? Uh, bring it up. You know, that's part of what we're trying to do here is talk about current stuff that these guys are are saying. You know, it's not about platforming anyone, but, you know, we've had a couple of comments about that, that they don't understand what the motivation is from this. It's not well, about... Basically, here's haters. what it comes down to. If that's how they feel, they don't have to watch. Yeah, because exactly. We all have our shows. We all do them the way we want to do them. Mm -hmm. And nobody tells, you, you know... We don't have a bunch of guys here that aren't informants. Right. It's the informants who are here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these informants lie. Some of them mm -hmm. don't lie. Some right. of them actually put out good facts. Yeah. And uh, they got to live with being an informant. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Not me. Yeah. I never informed on anybody. Have you ever been a tattletale, James? No, I, no, I haven't. Even as a kid, I was, I was told not to do it. My parents, I was... One time was had my next door neighbor a kid and um, you know he was picking on me and I went to my parents and they told me they they pretty much told me you need to go back outside and kick his butt you know they didn't want to hear it they didn't want to hear me say anything about my neighbor being a bully they said you know back then that's what you did you just hit him in the nose and be friends but you know I never got in trouble with the police so I've never had that part of it so. I know people will talk about it. Didn't you one so, time have a cop follow you and almost pull you over and give you a ticket? <laughs> oh, I've been pulled over for okay. a ticket. When you get but, pulled yeah. over, do you get excited? Like, oh, I'm a, I'm a criminal now? or <laughs> No. No, I, you know, but fortunately, I haven't had a ticket in about 10 years. I'm surprised. <laughs> I had a lead foot for a long time. Can you read that thing rolling underneath here? Yeah, please subscribe, hit the like, and the reminder bell. Thank you. Also, you can donate if you like. Yeah, our cash and app or hit the the heart button, and it'll and we will also the, get it. the cash app will be there. So, yep. but people, please please subscribe. Uh, we have a new person working with us now, and they're mm -hmm. they're really uh, and we also have a sponsor that's going we're going to be uh, using on the regular basis, and and that's about ready to happen too. So we have yep. some stuff happening here to help this channel grow. Right. Um, and that's what really counts. We worked hard to get to this point, didn't we, James? Yeah, definitely so. And, and you know, I appreciate all of you out there that have been, you have made it happen. So, you know, it really in, is encouraging, at least to me, and I know with Lee as well, to see the comments, see people tune in to our shows. And, you know, it really it motivates us to continue to put out good content. And we will be on the beginning of the month. We'll be talking about our sponsor, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very good move for us because they're doing quite a bit for us. Yeah, um, and they came to us. We did not go to them, which right. was nice. Mm -hmm. But anyway, James, thank you. I hope you thank you very it. much. I, I I know this is a thirty minute video. We just wanted to get it short out there and talk about uh, Sammy and his stories and mm -hmm. Jerry Capici's second. Uh, well, his uh, basically he's hearing it from a second source. Yes. He's not he hearing it from a direct source. Right. And and it seems like Jerry could swear that Sammy's it. Sammy, everything mm -hmm. that comes out of Sammy's mouth is the truth. But we know he's not. If you watch him and break him mm -hmm. down and check his 302s, we know Sammy yeah. lies quite a bit. Exactly. That's it, people. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you uh, watching the show.